everyone and welcome back. It's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and today I wanted to talk about a topic that I think all of us can benefit from and that is 10 unique ways to save money on your beading hobby, specifically if you're into making jewelry or bead weaving. Now there are many other ways to save money on your hobby and I hope you'll leave those in the comments down below. But let me share with you 10 of my favorite ways to use things creatively, use things up, and not spend money that you really don't have to spend. Tip number one is don't underestimate the power of bead soup. You can keep a container like this. It could start out as a small vial of random beads that you have left over from a project that you may think aren't enough to do anything with, and you may be correct at that moment. But when you build up a collection of bead soup, eventually you end up with a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes and colors, but they can be used. For example, I have this piece of bead embroidery here, one of my few ventures into bead embroidery, and this is all done using bead soup beads. They all came from this container of what looks to be a mess, and it's just about how you put colors and shapes together to make it work. Also, I have two pair of earrings down here, for example. You can pull light colors or shapes together and make some really simple wire hoop earrings. And there's literally tons of ideas out there for bead soup, and that could be a whole video on its own. So don't throw away those extra one-off beads. Put them in a container. Eventually, it will grow into something more massive like I have here over time if you do a lot of beading, and you will be glad that you saved these beads. One other tip for you I have for bead soup right off the top of my head is I like to do embellishments at the end of necklaces. For example, you know when you have an extender chain that comes off a lobster clasp, you can use something like a charm that you have left over to add a little extra decoration off the bottom of that. Or you can pick out a coordinating bead from your bead soup. Just one is needed. You can put that on a head pin and then attach it to your extender and it adds another detail to your jewelry. Tip number two is save your scraps of Fireline or your other expensive beading thread. Since Fireline is pricey and I do a lot of testing out of stitches and sometimes very small projects, even a couple of feet or even sometimes a foot can come in handy. So I don't throw those away. I just add them to a box that I have labeled for scrap Fireline and look how much it adds up over time. Sometimes you are almost at the end of a project too and you are running out of thread and you just need a little bit more to get yourself to the end. That's where the scraps of fire line can also come in handy. Sometimes it's not always possible to cut off the exact length of thread we need, so don't throw away those scraps. You'll be surprised when they come in handy. Tip number three is take it apart. Do you have a piece of jewelry maybe you made when you first started jewelry making or something that you just don't like anymore, don't wear, not going to sell it? and it's just sitting there. I'm sure we all have those pieces, and I have a whole basket of things that I need to take apart. And honestly, that's one of my favorite things about jewelry making is that unlike a lot of other crafting hobbies, with beading, you can reuse the beads, and in many cases, they're still just as perfect as they were when you first used them. So repurpose your old jewelry that you're not doing anything with and turn it into something different that you like even better that you're willing to sell or get. You can also do this with jewelry that you've purchased. If you have things that you no longer wear, you can take them apart, save the components, save some of the beads, and use those in your jewelry making. Tip number four is for those of you all who have scraps of wire. Maybe you are practicing with wire or cut off too much for a project. You end up with small bits and pieces, but that are large enough to do something with. We'll just hang on to those just like you would your fire line or your bead soup. And you can turn some of these pieces of wire into your own jump rings. They really don't take much wire at all to make your own. And you can make other beaded components like links, small clasps, and your own ear wire findings depending on the shape that your wire is in and how much of it you have left over. Tip number five is use a bead swap group like the one that I have set up on Facebook that I will link right down below. It's especially great if you're also a bead box lover who gets things that you may not particularly be fond of or just know that you won't use. 
and you can swap those items with your other beading friends and trade the items in that you wouldn't use for something that you will and both people end up with more usable items. There's lots of swap groups out there, not just the one I set up, and just be sure to follow the group rules of any particular group that you join and be careful about what personal information you give out. But swapping is a great way to put your unwanted treasures towards new treasures that you know you'd rather use. Tip number six is get organized. Have you ever found yourself purchasing something only to find out you already had it in your stash? How frustrating is that? And of course, you're not alone. I think we all do that from time to time. But that makes you spend money unnecessarily. And if you are organized, you will have a better idea as to what you have and where it is and how much you need. And also saves time too, and time is money. So definitely check out the playlist I put together. I have a whole series that I did last year all about bead storage and organization, even how to organize your findings, your finished jewelry for sale. I covered everything I could think of that I personally have implemented into my beading and hopefully those those ideas will help you too, or to help you come up with a system that works for your own situation. The next tip I have is to adapt a pattern to the beads you may already have. So for example, if you're bead weaving and you only have super duos and the pattern calls for twin beads, maybe they are similar enough for that pattern that you could make a swap. Sometimes things need trial and error, and sometimes you can just eyeball something and know that a simple swap would work just fine for similar beads. For example, what if you have a project that is asking for tealas and you only have tiles? Sometimes it'll work. This doesn't always work, but sometimes it will. So be sure to think outside of the box when it comes to a pattern. Maybe there's one thing you just don't have, but there's something else you can substitute. Could you substitute a three millimeter fire polish for a three millimeter bicone or round bead or pearl? Could you substitute a size 80 seed bead in its place? Or maybe a pattern asks for a hexagon shaped seed bead and you could just use the round version. Try to make some simple swaps if you can, if they work just as well. Some things are so precise that that's going to change the integrity of the piece. But sometimes swapping items out can work very well and prevent you from having to make another bead purchase. Along similar lines, my tip number eight is to use up your beads. I know all of us probably have a growing bead stash, especially the more time that goes by. You end up with more things sometimes than you will ever be able to use or ever want to use in your lifetime. And there's always something new coming out that you want to purchase. And if you can afford it and if it makes sense, then great, have fun. But if you're somebody who is in a position where you can't spend any more money on beading right now, look at what you do have. And again, going back to the previous tip about taking things apart. Try that and also search YouTube and Google for patterns that fit a specific bead type or shape that you may have on hand that you haven't used before or haven't used up yet. And instead of being bummed out about what you can't purchase brand new, look at what you have and see what you can make out of your current stash. Tip number nine is to prevent tarnish. So instead of making something and then it getting ruined because it's gotten so tarnished that it's a waste, prevent the issue of tarnish in the first place by taking a few proactive steps. So consider the storage of your findings and your finished pieces. Maybe you want to pick up some of the anti-tarnish tabs that you see here. You can store items with silica gel to help reduce some of the moisture around the item. Store your pieces in plastic or some type of airtight container. Here's an example of a finished necklace that I have stored in a plastic bag that's laying flat with most of the air removed so it's not just in the open air. And I've done a whole video about ways you can prevent tarnish, so I will try to link that in the corner too. But even some prevention can go a long way in saving you some money in your beading hobby. And finally, tip number 10 that I will share for now is consider making gifts for others. So do you have materials on hand in colors that you really can't stand? 
Is there a person in your life who you know is crazy about, say, brown, for example, but you know you will never ever wear or want to use brown? Well, why not use some of those items from your stash to make gifts for others? Maybe you have a friend that's really into earthy tones and you're into brighter colors. And that also goes to making items to sell as well because not everyone likes the same things. And how boring would it be if we all did? but you may make something beautiful in those colors that are just not your cup of tea, but that someone else would even love to purchase. I pulled out this necklace again. Maybe there's somebody who absolutely hates lime green. Now I happen to like this necklace. It's one of my much earlier pieces, but I still happen to really like it. I won't be taking it apart. This is just used as an example. But there could be plenty of people out there who just cannot stand this color and would maybe not like getting it in a surprise bead box, for example. But there could be somebody else like me who would definitely wear it. So that wraps it up for the 10 unique ways to save money on your beading hobby. I hope these tips were helpful for you. Maybe some of them were new to you or helped you think outside of the box a little bit. I'd love to hear from you all and what you have to say if you have especially additional ways that you save money on your beading hobby. There are many other tips and the list really goes on and I think we can all benefit from each other's advice. So if you have anything else to say, I'd love to hear from you. I want to thank you for being here for today's video. If you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you, definitely give it a big thumbs up and share with your other beading friends. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I would love to have you back. That's all I have for now, but until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beating. Mm -hmm.